Welcome back. In this video, I finish off the loft floor and the balustrade railing. So I start just by cutting the handrail post. These are 50 millimeter square by three mil thick. And I marked them out because I only used a, a cable balustrade and the ends are held in with like eye bolts of six mil. So I'm just tapping these out, getting them ready. And then the center posts have just holes in them as you can see there and the wire just feeds through and it's just held on the ends. I weld the post directly to the main I-beam of the loft and you can see them here. Already at this point it's really solid because that obviously that I-beam is just so enormous. You can see them positioned and then once I get to that point I make the top handrail and that's out of 40 by 10 millimeter flat bar and there's also the kick plate on the bottom because uh, this is a commercial building I need to make sure I make everything to the, to the appropriate standard. I work my way around making the handrail around the staircase and I use my laser just to make sure that I get the heights all exactly the same. This is just another kick plate going in Going by the code, you need to have a gap no greater than 10 millimeters between the floorboard and the bottom of that kick plate, and it's just there so that nothing falls or drops on someone below. Then I just work my way around with a hand railing, so going down the stairs, and it's a bit of messing about, but uh, I do want it to be accurate and I get this exactly right in the end and then it's the last rail going down the stairs and I've got three posts so there's the maximum spacing between posts is 1.5 meters so I've made it just a bit a little bit less than that One more. and these are fully welded you know it's way overkill but it's more cosmetic I suppose just so it looks nice so that's all the handrails done and I start with the floors so I chose this uh, pine it's actually New Zealand pine from a local timber mill tongue and groove I did route the end of this one board just because that's the end board and I went with the New Zealand pine because it's just a little bit better quality, I felt, compared to normal radiator pine that we get from, uh, say, a place like Bunnings. I cut a couple of grooves to go around the post and also add this small chamfer. So this is the underside and it's, that chamfer is just there to make a bit of clearance for the, the world that's holding the post on. I put it up, make sure it fits properly. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna stain this, I'm just gonna clear coat it and seal it. So with this particular board, once I had it fitted, I did uh, put sealer on there, uh, only on that board, because the other boards I'll seal them when all the boards are finished and in position. But this one, because it's hard to get around the corners and that at the end, thought I'd just do it now to make it easier a bit later. I cut the other boards ready to go up there. And I actually sealed just one side of these, it's the underside. I probably don't need to do this, but I figured, you know, like a lot of things in this workshop, I've gone this far, I want it to be 100% right. And I don't want to mess about trying to paint underneath all those floor joists. That first board is just, uh, I use liquid nails actually to hold it to that I-beam. And I just put some wedges in there just to make sure. I use the ultimate strength liquid nails and it held really well. Once I had that first one down, I just progressively start fitting the floorboards. And what I found is I just use this block of wood, just move it along with G clamps and then lever off of that to close the gaps. And you know, no floorboards are going to be perfect. So they do bow a little bit. And if you take your time, lever off of something like that, like what I'm doing, there's probably a few different ways you could do it. You want the gaps pretty tight, but 
a small gap here and there is not a big deal and it's probably a good thing to allow for expansion. One important thing is to make sure they're running parallel as you go. So I'm fortunate to have my own laser so I just use a laser and keep an eye on it. Because if you don't do that, I can see that it's pretty easy you'll get to the end and you'll end up with a board that is going to end up on an angle on the last board. So just keep an eye on it makes things a lot easier. And you can see this gap, I just close it in and lock it down. Really happy with the way this floor is coming up. This is three quarters done. And at this point I thought I'd start with the balustrate wires. So the wire pushes into these end fittings on both ends obviously. And you use a hydraulic um, crimping tool. And you can sort of see it there, it crimps down really tight on that cable it's not going anywhere and there's the eye bolts that screwed into the end post on both ends and then all i did is i bought some rubber grommets actually that fit in the center holes and there's a look at them there you just need an eight millimeter hole and they clip in real nice feed the feed the cables through once i was through i crimped the other end on this is the adjustable end with the tension uh, screw on there and it's quite easy I'm running out of videos buddy just, just do it <laughs> just for him good job Trey so there it is there, I've worked my way around, just keep going around the whole staircase and these are the last ones down the stairs. Now for these, because it's on an angle I needed to drill those holes on an angle and because of that you need grommets that are also angled. So I found these grommets that have a similar angle to the staircase and they work really well. Uh, they're in two halves and you can see once you push them together they're on an angle, you just push them in the same way as the other ones and the, the cable follows that really good and it just makes everything nice and neat. So yeah, I was really happy with those. So this is pretty much all done, the floors up there, handrails are all done, the cable's all done and then I start with the actual handrail capping. Now I did look around and in the end I thought, you know what, I'll just make my own and I'll just make this out of pine. I route out the centre to fit the same size uh, flat bar that I've actually used obviously and then that'll end up flush like that and then I turned it over and I used uh, a routing tool just to create a bit nicer radius on the top and then once that was done give it a good sand and I stained it just like I did with the window frames and the, and the barn door frames. There they are, all routed, ready to fit. And yeah, really happy with that. It was a much more economical way and I think it's turned out really good as well. So there's it, the pieces stained. One's the underside, one's the top side. And then after it was stained, I put two coats of sealer on there. And the sealer is really good actually because it brings out, you notice it here, it just brings out the grain and gives it that real nice finish, which is like a satin finish in the end. Once that was dry, I just progressively went around and fitted them all, and it was a really neat fit. So in some cases like here, I just use a G-clamp just to push it down with another piece of wood on top so I didn't damage anything. And then once it was all in position, it was just a couple of screws from the bottom, and that ain't going anywhere. So there's all the balustrade wires, the handrails, the top rails, and I'm super happy with that. I think they've come out perfect, actually. So it was time to have a bit of a break. Do they like the sweet stuff? I think they like everything. The chooks are out, like they usually are. And then this is the last thing I wanted to do, is the main lifting beam. It's eight metres long, and I bolt this to the main uh, roof trusses, and lift it up with the excavator first, put it onto the scissor lift. The scissor lift can lift about 450 kilos and that beam was about 300 and bolt it up 
and that worked out perfectly and that is basically the last beam of this build so from here it's really just finishing the interior in the next video i'll build some custom barn doors and i'll take you through the final sign off process see you next time